Uncle Sam wants you for the United States Space Force. In the 20th century, military battles were fought on land, sea, and air, but in the 21st century, there will be a new theater of combat, outer space. This was Donald Trump's intention when he created the Space Force, which is a funny name for sure, but the reality of the situation is deadly serious. This is the truth about Space Force. Okay, so one of the biggest problems with Space Force is that it's very difficult to find out what they are up to without having your screen filled up with ads for a mediocre Netflix show or a bunch of articles about why the name sounds like a joke. But the reality is that the Space Force is a critical aspect of national security for the United States, and by extension, it's very important to the rest of us Western allied nations as well. The Space Force is essentially just a modernization of the US Air Force Space Command that was established back in the 1980s, and Space Command isn't exactly a great name either. So when the Space Force was established in December 2019, it was essentially just a process of transferring duties from the Air Force to a more specialized branch of the military. The Space Force is headquartered in the state of Colorado. It consists of over 14,000 military and civilian personnel, members of Space Force, are referred to as Guardians, and most Space Force operations require a top secret security clearance, which is the highest level you can get. Of course, we know that there would be no Space Force without Donald Trump and his Vice President Mike Pence, both of whom were actually two of the most passionate voices in support of the US space program and space exploration in general, more so than any other US political leader in recent memory. Pence especially was very conscious of the fact that the Chinese were catching up to NASA very quickly. At the rate things were going, there was a very strong probability that China would overtake the US as the dominant power in low Earth orbit, and without the Artemis program that was championed by Mike Pence, the Chinese and their Russian partners would have a clear shot to take over activity on the moon in this decade. So, two key things to keep in mind when we are talking about Space Force. Thing number one, they are not actually weaponizing space. Not yet, at least. We'll get to that in a minute. And thing number two, Space Force has nothing to do with NASA. They are totally separate entities. Actually, the best way to think about it is NASA are looking up to the stars. They want to use technology on the Earth to learn about what's happening up there in outer space, while the Space Force is looking down at the Earth from space. They use technology in orbit to monitor and defend on the land, sea, and air. This is reflected in the Force's official motto, Semper Supra, which is Latin for always above. Most of what Space Force does involves military satellites and surveillance, but that's definitely not all they do. Let's talk about a company that is building a superhighway to the moon. This is Quantum Space, and their mission is to go beyond low Earth orbit by pushing communications technology and space infrastructure further out into deep space than ever before. With a fleet of high-altitude vehicles like the Ranger and the Scout designed to operate in geostationary orbit and above, Quantum Space is taking a unique approach that could lead them to become a major player in the new space economy. And I've got a way for us to get in on the action. Here's the deal. Space exploration startups like Quantum Space are not publicly traded companies. They do still have investors though, and access to these companies is only given to wealthy insiders like venture capitalists and private equity firms. But not anymore. Link2 is a platform that removes barriers to investing in the future of space exploration, giving you the opportunity to get in early on companies like Axiom Space, Astranis, and Quantum Space. Link2 is already providing over 600,000 everyday investors access to private investing. And because you are viewers of this channel, you get a $500 discount on your first investment using the discount code on the screen. So take advantage of this limited time promotion by clicking the link in the description below. If you want to see the full range of Space Force activities, look no further than the nine mission deltas of Space Force. And trust me, they saved the best for last. Delta-1. This was originally called Star Delta, but is known as Starcom or Star Command. 
This is essentially space training for Guardians. Recruits will go from military basic training to Starcom, where they are prepared for combat in the domain of space warfighting. From here, they can go on to specialize in any of the nine deltas of Space Force. Delta 2 is Space Domain Awareness. This specializes in intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition, and reconnaissance using space-based observation and environmental monitoring. Delta 3 is Space Electronic Warfare. This operates electronic attack, protection, and support capabilities to defend the space domain. Delta 4 is Missile Warning. This is the largest of all current Space Force Deltas, and for good reason, one of the most effective things that the military can do with their observation satellites is detect ballistic missile launches on the ground. While most satellites operate mostly autonomously, military satellites have monitoring stations that are manned 24-7, 365. So the moment that a long-range ballistic missile goes into the air, it's detected. We know where it launched from, where it's going, and who it's going to land on. Space Force Delta IV is the first line of defense for the United States and international partners in case of a missile attack. Delta V is command and control. This department maintains global awareness of operational environments and space forces to enable data-driven decisions, basically taking advantage of space-based infrastructure to make better choices on the battlefield. Delta VI is cyberspace operations. This is another big one. This department is all about cybersecurity, protecting not just the military space networks and operations, but also cyber defense of global telecom satellite systems. Delta 7 is intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. This is intelligence data to allow the detection and characterization of adversary space capabilities, basically keeping an eye on what the Chinese and Russians are up to in space. Delta 8 is satellite communications and navigation warfare. This is all about providing position, navigation, timing, and satellite communications to the US military their international partners, and commercial or civilian users. And Delta 9 is orbital warfare. This is the really exciting one. We are blowing stuff up in space, just like the movies. Delta 9 conducts protect and defend operations from space and provides response operations to deter and defeat adversary threats in space. All nine Space Force Deltas are overseen by Space Operations Command, which integrates, conducts, and assesses global space operations in order to deliver combat-relevant space capabilities to combat commanders, coalition partners, and the US government. So, I think that the biggest takeaway here is that the Space Force is no joke. They literally are always above, and defending all of us against some very real and very dangerous threats. Even as a Canadian who happens to live in our capital city, just spitting distance from the government, if the Russians ever decided to lob a ballistic missile up north at me, I know that someone at Space Force is going to handle that situation. So, that's pretty cool and comforting. So, does this all mean that Space Force is like an early version of Starfleet from Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek universe? Is the next step to send giant weaponized military ships into outer space? First, I guess we should address the elephant in the room. Is the Space Force insignia just a total ripoff of Starfleet? Because that's definitely what it looked like when Donald Trump unveiled the logo for the first time in January 2020. This really didn't help with the jokes about Space Force, and to be fair, there are striking similarities. What we are looking at here is the triangular delta symbol, the oval-shaped swoop going around the stars in the background. Was it inspired by Star Trek? Probably. But let's not forget that Star Trek itself was inspired by the US military and NASA. So, the triangle, the swoop, and the starry background have been a part of the NASA logo since 1959, way ahead of the Starfleet logo that was designed by Gene Roddenberry in 1964. And the Space Force logo is really just a much-needed modern take on the Air Force Space Command emblem, which was designed in 1982, and it shows. As for our fleet of military battleships in space, I wouldn't worry about that happening anytime soon, but we should expect to see orbital rocket technology being integrated into military operations before too long. We know that the US military is very interested in the SpaceX Starship rocket, and the reason being is that the Starship booster can take off from a launch site in the United States 
and deploy the giant upper stage ship into space with 100 metric tons of cargo on a suborbital trajectory that can take it halfway around the world in only about 30 minutes or so. And then, in theory, that ship can re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and make a controlled landing on any piece of flat, solid ground. Now, it should be said that the logistics of airdropping supplies from space are incredibly complicated, but just the fact that we are on the verge right now of having the technology to do it, that makes things start to feel pretty real. And for the short term, Space Force would be the only military operation on the planet with access to this space drop capability. We know that the Chinese want to develop something similar to Starship, but they are a long way away from anything that might be operational, we hope. And the Space Force is already doing a lot of business with SpaceX. They've been the primary customer for the company's Falcon Heavy rocket. After deploying Elon Musk's car into deep space, the Falcon Heavy didn't get much work until the Space Force came along. Of the nine Falcon Heavy flights to date, three of them have been classified Space Force missions that began in November 2022. We don't really know too much about what the Space Force is using this incredibly powerful rocket to do, other than put very heavy things into very high altitude orbits. We do know that in December 2023, Falcon Heavy deployed the X-37, an orbital spaceplane made by Boeing and operated by the Space Force. These vehicles have been around for a while and were previously managed by the Air Force Space Command. And again, we don't really know what they do up there, but the X-37 will typically spend years at a time just flying around in Earth orbit before they come down for a glider-style landing. Ostensibly, the latest flight of the X-37 is being used by NASA to test the effects of cosmic radiation on seeds. So, they probably leveraged the massive Delta V potential of the Falcon Heavy to get the space plane into a higher orbit than ever before, going above the protective magnetosphere of the Earth and touching into the Van Allen radiation belt. And when we think about the potential for a hostile nation like the Russians to put weapons of mass destruction into orbit and use them against our own satellite network, we know that this is the exact scenario that the Space Force was made for, and we may soon find out just what Space Force is really capable of.